Church, the Roku Church, and all of those that are watching us on btbn.tv. Glory to God. We want you to be attentive today. Stop what you're doing and listen. Listen. You cannot be washing dishes and hear God. Just listen. Praise you, Jesus. Let's look at this. In Genesis 1, 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he what? Them. Now, what we learned last night, we learned last night that when the scripture tells us that God, let, God said, let us make man in our own image. Right? And after, in our own likeness. Well, that means that God had, watch, watch this. If God was going to make Adam, if God was going to make Adam a copy of him, of himself, as he really is, as God himself really is, the Bible describes God as a fire from his loins down and a fire from his loins up. It describes him as having hands that out of which protrudes lightnings coming out of his hands. Now, Adam didn't come here looking like that, did he? So Adam was created in the image of God. So what was that image of God? Well, the scripture tells us, we learned this last night, that Jesus, according to Colossians, Jesus was before all things. Didn't it say that? It said Jesus was before all things. By him was all things made, and there was nothing that is made that was made without him. Isn't that right? So that means that he existed before the world was ever made. Solomon, Solomon uh, was given a glimpse into eternity past, and he saw Jesus in the thing that he could identify with. He saw him as wisdom. Is not that what God gave Solomon? And Solomon, glory to God, God knew, where, uh, Solomon knew rather, by divine intellect, by God allowing him to see into, the, into the, the past, into eternity, how the word of God existed before the world was ever formed, but Solomon saw him as wisdom, something he could relate to, wisdom. And he said he played before God and God delighted in him. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Is not Jesus the word manifested, the word made flesh? Glory to God. And so uh, this Jesus, this man Jesus, this, this Jesus, and, and, and I can truly say the man Jesus existed before the world was. You know why? Because the scripture says that we were in him before the foundations of the world. So he had to exist. Jesus had to exist before the world was ever made. Is that right? And, and let me show you something. There's another scripture that... Um, corroborates this um, when when Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek who, who was a form of God walking the earth amen he had no beginning he was a priest having no beginning and no end and uh, no parents glory to God the scripture says that Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek and he paid tithes for Levi. Well, Levi was Melchizedek's uh, great, 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 great grandson. He was his great, great grandson. He was four generations down from Melchizedek. But the scriptures say Levi was in the loins of Melchizedek, of, I'm sorry, of Abraham. He was in the loins of Abraham. Glory to God. So he was four generations down from Abraham, but Abraham was paying tithes for him. So he paid tithes for Levi, four generations down. Same way so, we were in the loins of Christ. Did not the scripture say, glory to God, we were in him? Ephesians tell us we were in him. When were we in him? 
before the foundations of the world. There's no way we could be in him before the foundation of the world and he not existed. So he existed before the world was as the image of God. He was, now what does that mean? The image of God, the image of God, the image of God. What does that mean? That means that Jesus Christ, that man that was manifested here on earth, was the form that God chose for himself. He was the form. In other words, <clears throat> God knew, as I said to you before, nobody could approach him. Jesus said, nobody knows the Father. You don't know him. You've never seen him, but I have. Notice this in the Jesus. I have. <laughs> when, did he see, when did he see the Father in eternity past? Hmm? He knew the Father. He said, you don't know the Father. You don't even know me. You don't know who I am. But the Father was unapproachable. Mountains, when he came down, mountains quaked and fire went up from the mountains. And, and the people were so afraid. They said, don't talk. Don't tell, tell Moses. Tell him, don't talk. Don't say nothing. Glory to God. Amen. They were afraid that the earth would swallow them up or stones would fall on them. And then, glory to God. He was, this God, though, being so unapproachable, he could, I mean, you just couldn't approach him. And he said to Moses, said, you can't look upon me and live. Do you think you can see me in, in that fleshy body that you're in and actually live? But Moses, being who he was, he knew how to get to God. So he basically said to him, well, okay, but you're God. You can make it happen. You can protect me. So God put him in the cleft of the mountain, and he, you know, put his, he shattered him, put a shadow over him. He had to shadow him because God is such light. God is light. He's light, and in him is no darkness. Can you imagine pure light, pure energy, pure light, and there's no darkness? And, and so God had to protect Moses, and, and, and then God lowered his hand a little Glory to God. And Moses just glimpsed. Just, you know, glimpse. You know what a glimpse is? A blink of an eye. He glimpsed his back, his hind parts. And that lit Moses up. So much so that people couldn't stand in the presence of Moses. They had to cover him up. They had to put a veil over him. That's how, that's how awesome the presence of God is. So this God that, that controls the universe, this great God that says, Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. How do you embrace a God like that? How do you talk to him? How, do, how can you look upon him? You can't even see him. If, if heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool, he's bigger than anything we could discern. We, we were looking at him. We couldn't see nothing but it, his toenail. We're so, he said we look like grasshoppers to him. Isn't that right? Glory to God. So how do you entertain a God like that? How does he declare himself? How does he communicate with us? How does he allow us to really know him? So the whole coming of Jesus Christ, the whole time Jesus was here, what was he saying? I came to declare the Father. I came to show you who the Father is. That's why I'm here, because you, you don't know him. I came to show you who he is. I came to declare his heart and his mind. And guess what? I am the express personage of God. I am the form that God chose to walk the earth in. I am this, I am this, this, the shape. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I am the, the, the embodiment of God. In him, the scripture says, in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That means the whole Godhead was in Jesus. The whole Godhead was in Jesus Christ. And he's walking the earth. And then God, it's, it's, I'm, what, I, what am I saying to you? I'm saying to you that God chose a form. He chose a form for himself. Hallelujah. We learned last night through scriptures, Leviticus 26 and, 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 and Exodus and all those other scriptures, that God has a soul. He has a soul. Hallelujah. He has a soul. 
And what is his soul? His soul is his word, because that's where you see his personality at, in his word, right? But the scripture called it his soul. God said, glory to God, if you do what I say, my soul will not abhor you. He said, if you do what I say, my soul will not hate you. Glory to God. He talked about his soul, his soul, his soul. I want you to see this great God. I want you to see the magnificence of him. I want you to see his prudency. He is prudent. He does not leave anything to chance. He ties up all the loose ends. Glory to God. And he's beyond, he's beyond flesh finding him out. He has to reveal himself. Glory to God. Flesh and blood cannot reason out God. Amen. Flesh and blood cannot, glory to God, understand God. He cannot be reasoned in our little finite minds. He has to reveal to us himself. So glory to God, his soul, his soul, his soul. Now look at this, look at this. He says, So God now way back in eternity past, way back in eternity before the world was ever made, God had a soul. He, he said, my soul will delight in you or my soul will not abhor you. Or my soul hate the one that rejects me. His soul is the place of likes and dislikes and loves and hates and glory to God and expression. But he had no way to express himself. He had no way to express his likes, his dislikes. Huh? Huh? No way. So just like when he was making Adam, he made Adam, he gave, he made Adam a living what? Soul. In other words, he gave Adam a body. He gave Adam a body to express his soul. Because Adam is a soul. He lived in a body. Is that right? We were souls that lived in a body. Is that right? When, 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 when we cry out, God save us, what are we asking him to save? We're not asking him to save the body. Body going back to the dust. But save our what? Soul. Because our soul is the essence. That's our being. In him we live and move and have our what? Being. Glory to God. The soul is our being. It is the thing that will live forever in eternity. Is that right? Whether it be in heaven or hell. Or whether it be with God or without God. Amen. It's going to live forever. It's going to, it's going to be around forever. Glory to God. That soul is that eternal part of man. But that soul, a soul alone, glory to God, it needs a body to express itself. The body was made by, oh, hallelujah. The body was made by God's hand. God said he took the clay and he fashioned a body. Look at that clay man there. He fashioned a body, but that body was laying there. It was lying there. It couldn't move. It couldn't think. Hello? It couldn't feel. It had no likes. It had no dislikes. When the soul leave a dead man's body, glory to God, that you can kick that dead man, stick him, stab him. He doesn't feel a thing. Hello? When the soul leave a dead man, glory to God, he doesn't know anything. The Bible says the dead knoweth nothing. Hello? Glory to God. So he's, he, he, he doesn't feel, he doesn't think, he doesn't want. And that's the way he was when he was created. When the body, the body, somebody say the body. When the body was created, it did not want anything. It did not know anything. It could not do anything. It couldn't even move. Because the body was created for one purpose. As a housing for the soul. As an expression for the soul. The body allows us to express ourselves. It allows us to communicate with one another. To interact with one another, does it not? Hmm? The body is what expresses my appetites, my likes and my dislikes. Hmm? Your love and your hates and all of those things. Your preferences, your personality is expressed in the body. If you didn't have a body, I wouldn't know what you were thinking. I wouldn't know what you're doing. I, you couldn't interact with me. Is that right? Because you have no body. Are you working with me? So God gave us a body to express ourselves. He gave Adam a body to express himself. Guess what? 
God having a soul, having a soul. Did we read that last night? God needed to express himself. So how does I do it? I need a body. I need a body to express my soul. Hallelujah. I need a body to let, the, let, to, to, to let my people know who I am, what I feel, what I think. And glory to God, what's in my heart? What's in my heart? I want to be touchable. I want to be approachable. I want to be able to sit down with them and have a conversation with them. I want to be able to sit and disciple. Glory to God, I want to be able to walk among them and talk among them. Let me tell you something. Glory to God. I need myself a body. So God, God made himself a body called Jesus. Come on, somebody. And he made him. Don't you think that Jesus just came into existence when he got in Mary's womb? Glory to God. Jesus was here before et in eternity passed. Come on, somebody. The Bible says that Jesus, glory to God, he, he danced and he, and he, he delighted and, he, and he, he co-mingled and he interacted in the inhabited places of the earth. Glory to God. Amen. He was walking the earth before time ever came into being. Glory to God. Because every life that is on the planet now has already been lived. Come on, somebody. That's why God has a, prob has a power of predestination. Because God know your beginning and he know your end. Why? Because he's already seen it. Come on and shout glory, somebody. He's already seen it. He's already seen it. He's already watched you. He watched you in eternity past. Glory to God. Jesus said, I delighted. I was playing around. I was walking around in the, in the, in the inhabited places of the earth before time was. Time came to manifest what was going on in eternity. Time came for us to live it out. Are y'all working with me? That's why God already know what your decisions are going to be. He know the people that are going to receive him. He know the people that are going to reject him. Are y'all hearing God? Are you hearing God? Hallelujah. Take your time, Dr. Bain. He needed a body to express himself. So Jesus, he said, this is a, okay, I got hands, but my hands got lightnings in them. Lightning coming out. I got a body here, glory to God, but it's a flame of fire. Glory to God. Amen. It's a flame of fire from a waist up and from a waist down. Hallelujah. I got feet, glory to God, but they just like brass. Glory to God. Come on, somebody. Amen. They too are on fire. Amen. So I need a body that is tangible. I need a body that they can touch. I need a body, glory to God, that Peter one day can testify laid in his bosom. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. I need a body that I can walk among them in. I need a body that they can touch. I need a body where John can one day testify that that life that was from the beginning, we have handled it. We have touched it. We have seen it with our own eyes. It has been a among us that 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 life that was from the beginning and even before the beginning so then comes Jesus in eternity past God made himself a man he made himself he made himself look like a man he chose that Form. That's his form. Hallelujah. That's his form. Did not the scripture say? But it said in Philippians. Let me find scripture because these preachers are going to throw me off of here. Glory to God if I don't say scripture here. Hallelujah. Let me show you something. Look in Philippians. Then we go there last night, second chapter. Philippians 2 and 5 say, says what now? Let this what? What does it say, Bishop? Turn, turn his mic on, please. Let this what? Let this mind be in you, mm -hmm. which was also in Christ Jesus, uh -huh. who being in the form of God. Let this mind, let this mind, let this mind. Let this mind be in you. The same mind. We're going to talk about that in a minute. 
Let this mind be in you that was in who? Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Let this mind that was in Christ, let it be in you. What did he say? Who being in the form of God. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who being in what? The form of God. This is, you mean Jesus is the form of God? Huh? Is that what it said? BT, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When, when God called me as an apostle, God said this. He said, if you have the guts to say what I say, huh? I'll bless you. I understand what he means now. And I'm going to say to you, you got to have the guts to embrace scripture. Yeah. It takes courage to embrace truth. Especially truth that is about to turn Christendom upside down. Because it's about to contradict everything we've been taught about salvation. Yeah, all that foolishness about dual nature. Come on. It's about to turn it upside down. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus was the form of God. That's the form, Pastor Ricky. That's the form that God chose for himself. That's the form. That's the body. That's the embodiment of, of God. In him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The whole Godhead was in that body called Jesus. And he didn't just get it near glory to God when he came through Mary's womb. He came through Mary's womb because the womb is the door into the earth. Come on, come on, come on. It's unlawful for any other creature operating here that didn't come through the womb. This planet don't belong to nobody but those who came through the womb. Hello. Hello. Glory to God. So he, yeah, Mosa. Yeah, lighten it up some. Light, lighten that one up some. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. He came through the womb. That was the door into the earth. That was a legal route. That was the legal entrance into the planet. So don't think he just existed then. So now, the scripture said, now what are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? Are you going to take that out of the Bible? Are you going to take that out of the Bible? Are you going to just rip it out, get you a pen knife like that king did, and just tear it out of the Bible because you don't like that? That Jesus was the form of God. Way back in eternity past. Made himself this form of God. Watch him now because he wanted to be touchable. He wanted us to be able to handle him. Glory to God. He wanted, wanted us to be able to approach him without, uh, without dying. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> So he chose this form, and this form, guess what? Guess what he did? Look, think about this form. Look at, look, let me show you how much God love us. He love us so much. He wanted to be, he wanted to be among us so much. To, look what he said, and I said, he said, um, hallelujah. Look at the eighth, look, look at the seventh verse. No, 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 no. Let me finish this six. He was in the form of God. He was the form of God. He was the form of God. Being found in the form of God. He was God manifested in the flesh. Do we have a problem with that? He was God manifested in the flesh. Now what does the next part of that verse say? Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Uh oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Equal with God. See, this is what got him crucified. Because he was a son, and he, 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 he messed around and said it. The high priest was waiting to trap him. He was waiting for him to say it. He was waiting for him to say it. He did, so he asked him, 
point blank, are you the son of God? He said, I am. And when he said that, the high priest ran his clothes. How dare you insinuate that you equal with God? How dare you insinuate that what God is, you are? How dare? Because in order for you to be the son, God himself got to be in you. See, they wasn't like us. They understood genealogies. Glory to God. Any man that's got a son, that son got to have your seed in him. I don't care if a woman, glory to God, has, has, has an affair with two men. The child that comes forth got to be the son of one. He cannot be the son of both of them. Come on. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. He can only be one of them's child. Hmm? He gonna have either he gonna have one seed or the other. Even science knows that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so these people, these scribes and Pharisees are saying, How dare you insinuate that the God of all the universe is in this flesh and blood? That we about to kill. Notice what the scriptures say about him though. Notice what the scriptures say. Notice what scripture. He was equal with God. Huh? He was equal. Not only in character. You're not just talking about his character being equal with God. It was. But that's not the only thing the scripture is implying here. The scripture is implying that he was in total agreement with God. Equal. Whatever it was, God. Whatever God's will was, it was his will too. Equal with him. Equal in character. Equal in desire. Equal in way. Oh, hallelujah. I heard God say something. I got to say this. This is just an insert here. God said, you cannot be my disciple if you are willing to do anything against the truth. Hmm? If you're willing to do anything against the truth. Did not the disciple, one of the disciples said, we can do nothing against the truth. There's a scripture. Uh huh. You can't do anything against the truth. God said you can't be my disciple if you're willing to do anything against the truth. If, if, if at any point the truth, amen, you compromise truth, you can't be God's disciple. At any point, in any situation, in any situation where you can't speak the total truth, you not supposed to put yourself in a situation where you can't tell the real truth. He said, if you're in a situation where you can't speak the truth, the real truth, I'm talking about, about that situation. You know? Someone may come to you and say, since this thing happened, my wife did this, or my husband did that, or my child did this or that. You got to be able to speak the truth. You got to say the truth. And if you are afraid, or if you feel it's not expedient for you to speak the truth because it's profitable for you to kind of evade the truth, ignore the truth. If that's profitable to you, huh? What did it say? 2 Corinthians 13 and 8, what did it say? 2 Corinthians 13 and 8, who got a Bible? For we can do nothing against the truth. Okay, nothing. But for the truth. But for the truth. So don't ever put, find yourself in a situation where you got to slant the truth or manipulate the truth or compromise the truth in any way. Because if you do, you cannot be his disciple. 
Now, God, God say, hear that. I don't know why he just stopped my message and stuck that in there. But he did. He stopped me and stuck that in there. He said, you cannot be his disciple if you're willing to compromise truth. Amen? Praise you, Jesus. Because truth is a manifestation of God and godliness. Amen. Now, where was I? Equal with God. He was equal. Equal in character, desire, wants, and agreement. Will. His will was equal to that of God. But look, watch this here. Watch this here. Read the next verse. Verse 7. But made himself of no reputation mm -hmm. and took upon him the form of a servant. God, when he was deciding on his own image, <laughs> the image that he was going to walk the earth in, he decided to take on him the form of a servant. This great God. Oh, don't you know he had to love us? Took on him the form of a servant. What else did he say? And was made in the likeness of men. May? What does he say? Now, now, don't get yourself confused. God didn't decide on that likeness after he made man. He made, he made man after he decided on his own form. Because Adam was made in God's image. Not God made in Adam's image. Come on, somebody. So God decided that this is the image. This is what I want to look like when I walk the earth. This is what I want to look like. I'm going to, I'm going to have hands. I'm going to have feet. So I'm going to look like what, they, what I'm going to later call man. Mm. Hmm. Do I need to go here now? Tell me when. Amen. Now what's the next verse say? And being formed fas in fashion as a man. Being found what? Being, and being found in fashion as a man. As a man, uh-huh. He humbled himself. God! Humble himself. Jesus. This great God. The Word of God, the omnipresent, omniscient God, gets in a body and humbles himself. Humbles himself. Listen to what it says. And became obedient unto death. Being obedient, God. Jesus, member of the Godhead, the whole Godhead in this body, obeying death, that's his enemy. Death was an enemy. Read. Even the death of the cross. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him. Okay, now watch this here. Being found in the fashion of a man, as a man. Made, one scripture says, one verse says, made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Made himself, prophetess, a little lower than the angels. God. When he made Jesus, he made him a little lower than the angels. His form. The form that I'm going to take. It's going to be lower than the angels. So after he made that, and he entertained it, he delighted in it, okay, yeah. Yeah. They can handle me now. So then they have a meeting, the determinate council, 
as a meeting and say, let us make man. Well, how are we going to make him? In our image and after our likeness. That's the Godhead. The whole Godhead is talking. So we're going to make him after our image. What is our image? We already got the image right here. Jesus Christ is the image. We're not going to manifest him yet. Come on, somebody. Jesus is not going to, we're going to manifest our image first, the image, Adam. We're going, to, we're going to make Adam. Hallelujah. We're going to make Adam in the image that we have chosen for ourselves. You, are you getting this? We're going to make Adam in the image of Christ. Hallelujah. He, 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 he ain't the real deal. Glory to God. He's just a likeness. He's just a likeness. Glory to God. But I need that likeness. Let me tell you why I need. Ooh, let me get, stop getting ahead of yourself. Dr. Things. Let me show you something here. Why do I need that likeness? Why not make Jesus first? Why not let Jesus be manifested first? Seeing as how we were in his loins. Hello. But how do we get in his loins? How did we get in Jesus' loins before the foundation of the world? How did we get there? Why were we there? Why were we in his loins? Why? Why is it that you were in his loins, but somebody else that doesn't get saved never showed up in his loins? Those who were in the loins of Christ in eternity past were there by their own choice. The choices that we made, the choice to receive Christ. Did not God say, I know those who are mine? Come on. <laughs> I already know them. Glory to God, so I can predestinate. Because I already know. I know, glory to God, that when Therese gets 29 years old, she's going to receive me. But I know that Sally Sue going to walk right there with her, be her best friend if Sally Sue lived to be 150. She'll never receive me. No matter what I do to try to reach her, she'll never, ever be born again. But Therese is going to make a decision to accept Jesus Christ. And because I'm looking at Therese from her beginning to her end, hello, I can predestine her to be in Christ. Come on, somebody. Hmm? Hello. Remember the ant? Remember the ant? God say, consider the ant. Hello. If I had a, if I had a, um, if I see a trail of ant going through here, and I had something over here that I wanted to put those ant in. And I put something right here, some obstacle, where they got to make a decision on which way to go. Right? They're either going to go that way or they're going to go this way. That where I want them to go, the ideal place is over here for them because they'll be preserved forever. I will protect them forever. But if they turn this way, they're going to perish. Right? So I, I'm standing here because I'm a God to the ant. To him, I'm a God. <laughs> I can wipe him out at any, any moment. His whole generation, his whole, the, his, all his generation. So I watch him. I watch him. And I see the ones that go that way. And I see the ones that go this way, right? I'm watching. I see. I see. Okay. I got 100 ant, and I got 20 of them that turn to the right, and I got 80 that turn to the left. Okay. So those 20, I'm going to preserve because they made the right decision. So I'm going to preserve them. I'm in eternity. Huh? I'm in eternity. So now I create time. 
I create time. Come on, somebody. I create time. And I tell those, and I put those ants inside of time. But I already know the ones that have made the decision to turn. Hello. So I can predestinate. I can say, Tom, Dick, and Harry going to heaven. They're going to be caught up in the rapture. Sally, Jane, Sue, and, and, and Henry, and John, and all them folks, they, they not, they, they're going to be left because they're going the wrong way. I already know it because I've watched them. That's called foresight and foreknowledge. God has foresight and foreknowledge. Amen? Nothing slips up on him. You're not doing nothing God didn't know you were going to do. Hello. And God is not making this as he go up. Yes. Good example. Before, when, when, when Jacob and Esau, the Bible said before they were ever born, God said, I love one and I hate the other one. And they had, the scripture said, before they had done any good or evil, God said, I already hate Esau. Why, why are you going to already hate the man, the man not even born yet? Glory to God. Because he has been born in eternity, God has already seen what he's going to do. Come on, somebody. He's already seen that he's going to sell his birthright. Are y'all hearing God? Are you hearing him? Everything that exists came out of God. Everything came out of God. Are y'all hearing God? I see. See, why Jesus? You know, y'all, I'm beginning to think following Bible teachers is risque. You're at risk following this ministry. Because these preachers go, who does that woman think she is? Is she out of her mind? Uh-huh, I sure am. I'm in the mind of Christ. Crazy, I'm out of my mind. Hallelujah, mind gone. I didn't let the mind that was in Christ be in me. Praise you, Jesus. We got to have the courage to see what God really did. So he put himself in fashion as a man. Put himself in fashion as a man. Now, this is the hard part for me. This is the hard part for me. This is the part that makes me cry, makes me scared. Makes me nervous. So you, you guys pray. Pray for me, amen? As I minister this part, because I, I got to make you see this. I got to persuade you of this. Hi, yes, I was talking to God about this this morning, and he, he answered me through Amy. Glory to God. He, he, he answered me. He said, glory to God. I told Kareem when he preached, I said, Kareem, don't, don't be worried about nothing. I got your back. Amos said, God said, he got your back. Glory to God. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He got my back. I, I want you to see this. I'm going to try to show it to you in the scriptures. Where I was last night, I'm going to try to show it to you in the scriptures. Watch this. Look at Ephesians 5 and 28. It's on page 28 in your study guide. Yes, Ephesians 5, Ephesians 20. 5 and 28. Mm -hmm. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Mm -hmm. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever hated his own flesh. Okay. But nourish it and cherish it in, even as the Lord the church. Now, now saints, open up every fiber of your being and walk out of here enriched with the knowledge of God. Read on. For we are members of his body. Of his what? Of his body. Uh-huh. Of his flesh. Uh-huh. And of his bone. Uh-huh. Read. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife. Uh-huh. And they too shall be one flesh. Uh-huh. This is a great mystery. It's a great what? 
Mystery. It's a great what? Mystery. Somebody say mystery. Mystery. What is a mystery? A secret. Something that causes you to shut your mouth yes. because you don't know what you're talking about until God reveals it. Is yeah. that what a mystery is? Yeah. That's what it is. It causes us to shut our mouths until God reveals it. You cannot discern it with intellect. Salvation is not something, glory to God, the old prophets couldn't figure it out. Now these men were anointed by God and they could not figure out salvation. How are we going to figure it out with God, without God revealing it? That's why it's called a mystery. He went on to say that this mystery was hidden in him. It was hidden in him. Is that right? And he didn't reveal it to the sons of men, natural people. It was not revealed until the day of the church. And he only revealed it then to his holy apostles and prophets of the new covenant. And our job, the job of the apostles was to take it and pour it into the church. And this revelation will never get into the church by those who call themselves apostles and are indeed are not. You have to be the real deal for God to unravel, to reveal to you the mystery of Christ. It comes from God and God alone. Are you hearing him? Now, I want you to see this because this is one of the most important scriptures you'll ever read regarding salvation. When God, watch this now. When God, made Adam. Watch this. Genesis 2.21. God says it's not good for man to be alone, right? I want to show you something. He says it's not good for man to be alone. I'm going to make him a help me. I'm going to make a help me for him. I'm going to make a wife for him. I'm going to make a wife for him. I'm going to make him a wife. But notice how he made, look at, look, read this Genesis 2, 21 to 24. What did he say? 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall <laughs> upon Adam. <laughs> and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Mm. And the rib which the Lord God taken, had taken from, from man, made he a woman mm. and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones mm -hmm. and flesh of my flesh. Uh -huh. We shall be, he, she shall be called woman uh -huh. because she was taken out of man. Uh -huh. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Now wait a minute. Is this Paul saying the exact same thing that... Moses wrote in Genesis, almost word for word. Is that right? That, that they shall be what? One. one, one what? Flesh. One flesh. They shall be one flesh. Now, now listen to me really good here. Because, you know, you're gonna, you guys are going to have to protect me because they may throw me out your nation for this. But glory to God. Let me, let me, let me, let me show you something here. Let me show you something here. Glory to God. Because the, the, this kind of teaching will, will get you labeled a heretic. Amen? It'll get you labeled a heretic. But we're going we gonna to stay explicitly with Scripture. Amen? So if there be any rebuttal, if there be any refute, if there be any controversy, let it be with the Scripture and not with us personally. Amen? Glory to God. Now watch this here. I want you to, I want you to see the parallelism here. Glory to God. No man ever hated his own flesh. Huh? Flesh. But notice the 28th verse. So ought men to love their wives as their what? Own body. Because they are one what? Flesh. They are one flesh. When they come back together in matrimony, 
Hmm? When they come together in matrimony, that's that oneness now restored. The oneness of Adam. Then the scriptures say he called them what? Adam. He called them Adam. Both of them were called Adam. Amen. Male and female he made them. And he called them Adam. That's not in the book, but it's in the Bible. He called them Adam in Genesis. Amen. Now, I want you to see this. The 30th verse. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Let's back up to the 29th verse. Mm -hmm. No man ever yet hated his own flesh, mm -hmm. but nourishes and cherishes it even as the Lord the church. Now, 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 this is what he's saying. This is a mystery here. Watch this. Where are my um, um, PGA, B, PGA, where, the, the, these young men, where, 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 where are those young men? Glory to God. Same shirts. Yes. Can, can you take off your jacket? Is it okay? I mean, I know you're clean and all, but, you know, <laughs> glory to God. Amen. Mr. Kareem, please come. Over here on this side. Now, Kareem has just inherit the, inherited the position of Jesus Christ. Okay? This is Jesus. Seated, seated at the right hand of God. Where we have kept him all this 2,000 years. He's been sitting down doing nothing. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. That's what, that's what we treated him as. Amen. But now... Corinthians says, Book of Corinthians, 15th chapter. Y'all know this, that, 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 that lesson. Now, now let's, let's see if we can see it in a different light today, better light, rather. Watch this. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Let's go to Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 35. Verse 35. But some man will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Some man is going to ask what? How are the dead raised? How are up? the dead raised? How are the dead raised? Let's focus on Jesus. Let's focus on Jesus. That's because that's who Paul is focusing on here. Uh-huh. And with what body do they come? What body? What body? Does the dead rise in? Read. Thou fool, that <laughs> which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. Okay. Now, 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 now. Go help me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because here's another confirmation here. The Bible says that, yes, the Bible says that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall do what? Quicken your what? Your what body? Mortal? Is this our mortal body? Is this mortal? But the scripture you just read says, it's not quickened unless it dies. 
Hello? It's not quickened unless it died. So at salvation, we literally died. That's where we get the terminology old man. Right? The old man is dead. The Bible say reckon him as dead. In other words, keep him dead. Don't pick back up his deeds and his attributes. But he's dead. So we died at salvation. We literally died. And we were quickened by the Holy Ghost. We could not be quickened except we died. Now, so make a note of that. When you have to teach this, you leaders that have to teach this, keep, make a note that that, that is a confirm, com, confirmation scripture that we did die at salvation. And we were quickened because we could not be quickened except we were dead. All right? Glory to God. Read. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be. Okay. So that which went into the, he says, soweth. That which went into the grave, that body that Jesus went in the grave with is not the body that he's coming out with. Are you hearing? It's not the body that he's coming out with. Read. But bare grain, it may, be ch it may chance of wheat or of some other grain. Okay. That, that body that Jesus went in the grave with it's going to produce something else when, it's, when, it's, when it comes up. When you plant a seed, when you plant corn, a seed of corn in the ground, when that corn comes up, it doesn't look like anything like what you planted. Does it? Doesn't, doesn't look like anything. And not only that, you plant one seed, and that's what he's saying, bare grain, but when it produces, each one of those stalks has a bunch of ears on it, and each ear has a bunch of grains on it. Is that right? Glory to God. So it produces something totally different than what was planted. Are y'all working with me? Praise the Lord. Read. But God give it, it a body as it had pleased him. God give it a body. God gave Jesus a body that pleased him. Remember Jesus said to God, he said, thine they were, but thy gave them to me. Didn't he say that? They, you, they were yours, but you gave them to me. The Bible says God put members in the body as it pleased him. Didn't it say that in, in Corinthians 12? That God is the one that planted us in the body of Christ. And he positioned us as it pleased him. He made some apostles. He made some prophets. He made some teachers. Glory to God, some helps, some evangelists, some exalters. He, he put you where it pleased him. Is that right? Come on, read. Unto every seed his own body. Every seed got his own body. Hallelujah. Every seed got his own what? Body. Come on, read. All flesh is not the same flesh. Mm -hmm. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies. Now, we got a celestial body coming, waiting for us in the heavens. Woo -wee. That's that hope that God subjected us to. Is that right? We got a body coming, glory to God, and we're supposed to, we're supposed to anticipate it. We're supposed to be excited about it, glory to God. But it's in the heavens, that celestial body. But they are bodies terrestrial. That's this body right here, this mortal body. Because that celestial body is incorruptible. This one is corruptible. It's mortal. It can die. It can hurt. It has a lot of pain in it. Glory to God. When I came in here, my feet were hurting. Hallelujah. But now the anointing, hallelujah, glory to God, has diminished the pain. If it's there, I can't feel it. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. But yet and still, this body is mortal. Amen? It gets tired. I know preachers say, don't ever tell the people you're tired. Glory to God. Don't tell folks you're tired. Glory to God. What? what, what? I'm tired. When I get tired, I get tired. Hello, somebody. Don't you get tired? I get tired. God got tired. The Bible say he rested. <laughs> Hello? If he can say he get tired, why can't he say I get tired? <laughs> Hello? 
Praise you, Jesus. Read. You know, I just, I just, I just, I just don't understand that, you know, preachers think they all of that. Glory to God. We got to be all of that. We not all of that. We just trying to get to heaven like everybody else. Isn't that right? Come on now. We just trying to get to heaven. We ain't made it to heaven yet. Glory to God. We just trying to get there. Isn't that right? Amen. Glory to God. I got to do the same thing you do. I mess around here, glory to God, with all this revelation. End up in hell. Hallelujah. That would be a terrible thing. Isn't that right? Yes. You don't preach to others and then I myself be a castaway. That would be a terrible thing. Glory to God. Read. And bodies terrestrial. Okay, now, so we got terrestrial bodies and we got celestial bodies. Now, I want you to go back to Ephesians 5 and 30. 28, 29, 30. I want you to, these young men, help me, help me uh, illustrate this. Look at this. I want you to see what Paul is saying here. He said this is a mystery. Yeah. Let me show you what I was trying to show you last night. Jesus was raised from the dead. He was raised from the dead. Raised up from the dead. Now what body? The Bible say he was planted as bare grain is planted. He was alone. But when he rose, hallelujah, he didn't come out of there alone either. He didn't come out of there alone. Because the Bible said those old patriarchs that were down there, glory to God, they said they had to wait. But they couldn't be made perfect without us. Is that right? Yes. Glory to God. They had to wait until, glory to God, Jesus came to retrieve them out of the lower parts of the earth. And they were made perfect and brought into the presence of God. Amen? Praise the Lord. You think they went into the presence of God in their natural bodies? The Bible says flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom. Cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood can inherit it. So they had to come up with a terrestrial body. Come on, are y'all hearing? I mean a celestial body. They had to be raised in their celestial bodies. Are y'all hearing God? Yes. Hallelujah. So now Jesus now is exalted to the right hand of God. Amen. You may take your seat, Jesus. Amen. Seated on the right hand of God. Hallelujah. This is the the man that was on the cross. Right? He's sitting down now. This is the man that when Stephen was being stoned that stood up and gave Stephen a standing ovation. That's the man Jesus, right? That's the man Jesus. Let me tell you what this man Jesus is. Got your seatbelts tight? This man, Jesus, is the head of the body. You didn't get that. This man, Jesus, is the head of the body. Now, why, why am I saying that? Why, what's the significance in that? Because there's a mindset here. There's a mindset in the church that this is Jesus and this is the church over here trying to be like Jesus. That's the mindset. And like Prophet said last night, we, we're over here as the church trying to maintain a relationship with Jesus. But that's not it. That's not salvation. That's not salvation. Let me tell you what salvation really is at the risk of, being, of sounding like a heretic. Let me tell you what it really is. I'm going to tell you a story about a God that wanted sons that was tired of dwelling alone. A God that stepped out on the universe and said, are there any other gods like me? Is there anything else out there like me? 
And there was no, he said there was silence. He didn't hear anything. There was nothing like him. He dwelled alone. He says, I don't have a beginning. I don't have an end. And the scripture describes him as love. As love. Anybody in here know how to love? Do you love it? Even in the natural. Huh? If you're a lover in the natural, you want to be loved. Isn't that right? You want somebody to love you. People get in trouble looking for somebody to love them. Isn't that right? Are we in a, is God any different? God wanted somebody to love him. But there's no way that we could love God the way God is capable of loving us unless we were as he is. Come on, are, are you hearing God? So God says, there's no creature that can love me like, like I want to be loved. I got to create him. I got to beget him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are, are, you, are you hearing God? He's got to come out of me. He's got to come out of me. He's got to be an extension of me. What is your child? What are your children? What are your children, your sons and your daughters? Are they not extensions of you? Every one of them have your seed in them. And they are extensions of you, aren't they? Glory to God. Amen. They, they what you, you look at them and glory to God, they, they, they little you walking around. Little yous. Look at, look at Ian Robinson, Ian and May. All them little Robinsons walking around. Glory to God. You don't have to wonder whose child they are. They look just like them. Amen. That seed, glory to God. Amen. Ian, you ain't got no controversy, honey. Hallelujah. Amen. Your seed in all of them. Praise you, Jesus. Them look, them look, those are extensions of Ian Robinson. That's his seed. And God wanted the same thing. He wanted children. He said, I want a people that I can walk among. I can, I can be their God and they can be my people. I can interact with them. I can handle them. We can sit down and talk. He said, come let us reason together. He want to talk to somebody. He want somebody, he want to talk to somebody though that understand him. So he know you don't have that kind of understanding. You don't, you, you, your little finite mind don't have that. So he got to, he got to, Jesus, it's got to be his seed that produces that. No other seed can produce that. Got to be his seed that produces that. Are y'all hearing God? So now, what does he do? He said, okay, the word. The word now is, Sitting in the Godhead, say, okay. All right, this is what you want. This is what you want. Because the word is how he expressed himself, you see. So the word say, then prepare me a body. A body thou hast prepared me. I'll go down, and I'll be a body. This is significant here. I'll be a body. Watch this here now. The church is the body of Christ. Y'all don't hear me. The church is the body of Christ. The church is the body <coughs> that Christ was resurrected in. Did not Romans 6 say that we were resurrected in a new life? Huh? We were resurrected with Jesus in us. Anybody got a problem with Jesus being in them? Is Jesus in you or is he not? Did not the scripture say, glory to God, Paul said, I'm, I'm troubled because I want to make sure Christ is formed in you. Christ formed in you. I want you to be the form of Christ now. I want you to be the form that Christ takes now. Are you hearing this? So, this body, God fashioned this body. God did it. He said, we're the workmanship of God. God, the Father did this. The Father took Jesus and made him the head of the body. There's a scripture that says he's the head at all the joints and, and um, bands connect to this head. Find that scripture. Glory to God. <clears throat> These preachers are going to find this scripture. You guys watch, watch this. So Jesus is the head, and the Bible says we are the bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. We are members of his body. 
You know when the scripture says that God planted us in, 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 in uh, you look up these scriptures when you get home and just make a note of them. In, in, in Corinthians 12, when it says God set, set the members in the body as it pleased him. Huh? It said God set the members in the body as it pleased him. Did he not say that? Glory to God. He made, he made some apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and all the gifts. Glory to God. He set it up as it pleased him. We are the workmanship of the Father, but you never see where he made anybody the head. He said, he said, you are the feet, or you are the hand. He said, the, the, the eye can't say to the foot. Huh? But Jesus is the head. Um, what, I'm trying to, what am I trying to show you? I'm trying to show you that that man, this man... Jesus, that hung on the cross, went into the grave, died, and was resurrected. When he rose, this is what he looked like. He was in them. He was in each one of them. He might be an arm. Or foot. Do you have to understand what I'm saying? He's a, these are members of the body. So now this is what Jesus looks like now. Glory to God. Do I have any more PGAs up here? Or, or, come on. Do I, where are you? PGAs, come, please, please, please. And the only reason I'm calling the PGAs is because they, 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 they got on the same colors here. We can identify that with this. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. Over here. Over here, over here. Over here. Jesus, come. This now, look at this. This Jesus in glory, but this is his body on the earth. He's the head of this body. You see this? He's the head. But these are his joints and bands and, and, and ligaments and, 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 and uh, members. These are his arms and legs and feet. Are you seeing this? But he's the head. Now, that head doesn't mean that he's just the authority. Literally, literally, Scripture says, watch this, Jesus said, Father, make them what? How? As we are one. I'm in you, you in me, and they in us. Make them one. Not five or six, 10, 12, 15 million people trying to have a relationship with him. He said, be one with him. I want them to be one. I want them to be just like us. I want them to be, glory to God. And this, and this was the desire of the Father. The, the Father the Father wanted a dwelling place. And each one of these became the temple of God. A dwelling place for God. The temple of the most high God. It was God that spoke through Jesus and said, you destroy this temple and I'll raise it up in three days. This was a temple. The flesh was nothing but a temple for God to dwell in. And so God, God wanting himself a family. Glory to God. He, he, yeah, 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 yeah. He said, now you are the family of God on the earth. The family. The one with the seed in. But not, no, you're more than that too. Let me show you something. Well, you, that's what you are, but you don't understand it yet. This body. Jesus is over here. The head of the body. 
up there in heaven. This body here is on, his body is on the earth. He got a body. He got an extension of himself on the earth. Is that right? As a habitation for God. He's saying, you're the bone of my bone. Flesh of my flesh. Just like Eve was the bone of Adam's bone and the flesh of Adam's flesh. And when they come together, they were one. He said, you're the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. We are one. Praise the Lord. My time is up on Love TV. Go to God love. We love you so much. Amen. We, 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 we got to run now. Glory to God. I know, well, you got to run. But nevertheless, glory to God. I want to say, I want to give a shout out to my friend, David Casanova. I love you so much. Praise the Lord. And this is Dr. Banks and all of BTI saying we'll see you next time. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. All right. All right, this workmanship of God, he said he fashioned the body of Christ as it pleased him. I want you to see if you are the bone of his bone and the flesh of his flesh, that means your body is the dwelling place of Jesus Christ. Look at Ephesians, third chapter. Quickly. Fourteen verse says this. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family, the whole family, what is a family? Do you think that they just throw these words around? The whole family? Family? What is a family? A family means, glory to God, that we are of the same seed. We are of the same seed. The whole family where? In heaven. In heaven? Those patriarchs that are gone already? Come on. Those that have already received their celestial bodies Sleeping up there in heaven, waiting on us. Glory to God. The whole family that's in heaven, not only those, that, those patriarchs, but even, glory to God, the Father himself, the Holy Ghost, glory to God, the Godhead. Amen. The whole family in heaven, and where else is the family? Where else is the family? No, 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 the devil don't want you to say that. Where else is the family? You think that you can be in God's family and not be as he is? Huh? You think it's possible that God got sons and they not be as he is? Did not Hebrews 12 tell you that he's the father of what? He's the father of what? Spirits. We are spiritual beings living in this body. And he said, this family on earth, glory to God, he said, chill out. Take it easy, don't worry. Glory to God, you're going to suffer some because you got to be tested and tried and make yourself worthy of the kingdom. However, but the day is coming if you pass the test. If you pass the test, glory to God, I'm going to leave you in these terrestrial bodies for testing and for trying. This is your tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Your body is your tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Just like I told Adam, don't touch that fruit on that tree. I'm telling you, glory to God, deny yourself the comforts of the flesh. Deny yourself feeding the flesh, glory to God, from the world. Make your body a living sacrifice. Give it over to me. Give it to God. Let Jesus live his life out through your body. Let him live it out. Don't interfere. Be equal with the Jesus that's in you. Be equal with him. Because this is his flesh. This is his bone. You're part of his family. I see that. We the family on earth. And notice what he said. He said, notice what he said. He said, he said, when the day come, guess what's going to happen? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. We shall be changed. 
Why are we going to be changed? Because we got a seed in us. And that seed is going to produce after its own kind. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. He said, don't be dismayed. Glory to God. And he said, there's only one thing left. There's only one thing. He said, we are waiting for the redemption of our body. That's the only thing left to be redeemed. The redemption of our body. We got to be changed out of this body into a glorious, incorruptible body. Come on, somebody. Second Corinthians. No, Colossians 2, verse 19. That's what you say? What does it say? A nothing holding the head from which all now the body... Beholding, now beholding the head. By joints and bands, having nourishment ministered and knit together, increase it with the increase of God. Uh-oh. Beholding the head. The head. Jesus is the head, but this is his body on earth. Has not yet been changed to his glorious estate. Down here for trying and testing and procuring of more sons. Down here, working the ministry of reconciliation, they're still here as co-laborers with God. Are you hearing God? Now, let's put this in layman's terms. Let me make the devil mad and all that work for him. Watch this. When Jesus got in this body, remember we just read that we couldn't be quickened unless we died. So we died. How did we die? You had to take the soul out, took the soul out, put soul in the spirit. Is that right? Now Jesus in this body, he quickened the body alive again so that we could be his flesh. He got in this body, right? Jesus got in this body and made it alive unto God, sanctified it, circumcised it according to scripture, huh? made it a habitation for God. He had to circumcise it because what did Jesus say? Jesus said, you don't put new wine in old vessel. They couldn't contain it. So he had to circumcise the flesh, Colossians 2, 10 through 13. Circumcise the flesh, made it ready for God to live in, for Jesus to be in here. Because he don't dwell in no unclean places. Clean it out. Jesus is in here. Old man dead. This is a what? You're scared. You're scared. Cowards. Coward, 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 coward. Say it. Make the devil mad. Okay, let's make him even madder. My body is the new man. My body been born again. How was it born again? Nicodemus asked, dude, can't go back in your mama's womb. Why? It was born again from the dead. It died at salvation and was resurrected in the newness of life. Where did that new life come from? It came from Jesus. Getting in there. The Bible says, good God Almighty, 1 John, hey, Baba Hassan. In 1 John, the third chapter, read it in the 8th and ninth verse. Devil don't want you to believe this. Because, see, you might just get free. Yes. You might just believe you can live without sinning in this world. You might just believe that you can walk pleasing unto God. What did it say? He that committed sin is of the devil. Uh-oh. For the devil sinned from the beginning. Mm -hmm. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. This is a Son of God. This is the new man.
He's a new man. This is Jesus living in the flesh. Now, oh, hey, wait a minute. Now, in order to have dual nature, there got to be Jesus and the devil living in there. Didn't I tell you that when a child is born, he, he can't have a one parent? He can't be the son of the devil and God. Come on now. The only reason that we inherit a new body is because the seed of God is in this one. You don't believe me? Read the next verse. Whosoever is born of God. Whoever is born of God. This body was born again. I'm talking about the body now. I know the soul is preserved. The soul is preserved. But my body was born again from the dead. So was my soul. But you can't leave my body out. Because it was quickened. Alive again. With a new man in it. Jesus living in it. What did he say about him? Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. This body is not like the old man was. Why? What did he say? He cannot. He don't commit sin. Why? For his seed remaineth in him. Oh, where's the seed at? Where's the seed of God at? Where's God's seed at? Is it not in you? Andrew, is it in you? Now, let me show you something here. I want you to see this. I want you to see salvation. This is salvation. The workmanship of God. My daddy, my daddy, my daddy set me down and he revealed the mystery of Christ to me. It's a mystery that he hid in himself. Let me show you now what the theologians missed here. That's why it's so ludicrous to come up with something called dual nature. What in the foolishness is that? This body, this body, this body. Didn't the scripture call this the body of Christ? Find my other scripture says renewed in knowledge after the image of him who created him. I want to put that on record. I think you might have given it to me some, somewhere. Glory to God. I need to put that on record. Hallelujah. It's the temple of God. Yeah, Colossians 3. Yeah, go to Colossians 3. I mean, it's Colossians 3, 9, and 10, and, if, and Philippians, I mean, I'm sorry, Ephesians 4, 24 is one of those. Let's, let's look at the, Philipp, uh, the Ephesians 1 first. Let me see what that one is, 4, 24. Let's see. Created in righteousness. Okay, yes. Let's look at, um, let's look at uh, Colossians 3, 9, and 10. Hallelujah. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Mm -hmm. The Bible said the old man was destroyed in, in, in Romans 6. Didn't it say that? It said the old man was destroyed. Is that right? That body of sin was destroyed. And he said, but look at this scripture here. It said, but you have put off the old man. Glory to God. So don't, don't go back to line. And have done what? Read the 10th verse. Everybody read that 10th verse. What does it say? And I've put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Wait a minute now. <laughs> you have put on what? Where, he, where is he at? Where's the new man at that you put on? He said a new man, a new man. This body is a new man. Created how? In the knowledge and after the what? Image of who? Of him that did what? Created, created him. him. He's still after the image. 
of God. Form of God. This was the form. He looked like a man, don't he? He looked like a man. But he better than Adam. I say he better than Adam. This, this is what Adam should have been. He's better than Adam because God living in him. Is that right? Hallelujah. Y'all offended with my bare feet? Praise you, Jesus. I'm good. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. This is what you got to see. This is the new man. You put him on because your soul lives in him as well. Huh? And if you now agree with him, you make your will equal to that of God. You're in agreement with him. You're equal with God. So soul, if, now let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me slow down here. In my closing, I want you to see this. This is your body that used to be yours that has been circumcised, that has been sanctified, that has been made holy and righteous. And the scripture says in 2 Thessalonians 5.23, it can be preserved, how? Blameless until when? The coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The body can be preserved blameless. But it says this, if this is Jesus in the flesh, Jesus Christ living in the flesh, hallelujah, and our soul lives in here as, because we're one with him, our soul lives in the spirit. We don't live in the flesh, we live in the spirit, is that right? But the spirit is back in the body, is that right? He's in this body, it's his body, it's the body of Christ. Now if this is the body of Christ, it has the mind of Christ. Remember your soul when, before you met God? Your soul controlled your mind, didn't it? Your brain. Your soul told you what to think. Your soul told you what to feel. Your soul told you how to act. Is that right? It controlled your thinking. Well, Jesus is in this body. Don't you think he controls this? That's why the scriptures say, let the mind that was in the being you that was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind, this, this, this is renewed in righteousness. This is the new man. He said, let him do his thing. Let him work the ministry of reconciliation. Don't usurp no authority. Don't, 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 don't interfere. Be a witness. Just be a witness. Let the soul be in agreement with what Jesus want to do through this body. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? So this is the Son of God manifested so that he could do what? Destroy the works of the devil. And, th and what is he saying? He don't, did I tell you that the body don't have no desires of his own? Do you think Jesus is going to give this body lust? You think Jesus is going to make this body want to wanna, wanna go fornicate? Is Jesus going to do that? If this body ends up in fornication, if this body ends up in lust, who did it? Your soul did it. Your soul, the Bible said, you take this body and join it to a harlot. Didn't it say that? Not Jesus. He cannot sin. He cannot sin. He will never make this body sin. Never, 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 never. But you can defile it. That's why the scripture warns you, say, he that defiles the temple of God, him God shall destroy. If you defile this temple of God, this is God's temple, this is Christ manifested in the flesh. Glory to God. Now, we can know that. And you can be a fool with it too. You can be a fool and say, I'm, I'm Jesus. You're crazy. Jesus lives in you. I'm a God. You the son of God, which makes you a God, but you are not to be worshipped in this season. The day will come when Gentiles will bow down. The day will come when angels will fall at your feet and worship you. 
but this is not that day. Jesus didn't compel anybody to worship him. He said, when you pray, pray to the Father. Hmm? Just go to him in my name. But ask the Father what you will, and I'll do it. Are you understanding me? The whole 33 and a half years, did Jesus ever compel anybody to worship him? Somebody say, call him good. He said, who is good? Well, you call me good. And there ain't nobody good but the Father. Are you, are you understanding him? Praise the Lord. But now, don't you ever think that in my flesh is no good thing. Your flesh is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Your temple is the house of God. Your temple is the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, amen, temple, glory to God, the temple of God that is manifested in, in the world today for all men to see your good works that they may glorify the Father which is in heaven. Your body is holy. Your body is righteous. Your body is the flesh of his flesh and the bone of his bone. Your body represents and manifests, rather, the family of God on the earth. This is Jesus. This is salvation. Salvation is that place, those bodies, those bodies that God can live in. God can live in. He can live in. He, he looking around. He said, oh, I'm in this one, this one, this one. This, he can interact with her. He can, he can interact with her. Glory to God. He can, he can love on hope. Glory to God. He can, he can touch her. Glory to God. Amen. That's why he say, love one another. This is a commandment. Love one another. Don't let anything stop you from loving each other. Why? Because that's who I am. That's what manifests me. That's why I, I, I wanted the body. I wanted your body so I could love. That's why I wanted it. I wanted it so I could express my love for each other, for, for each one of you. I wanted to be able to express it. I wanted to be able to reason with you. I wanted to be able to talk with you. I wanted to be able to, to show you my kindness, to show you my love, to show you how, much, how I feel about you. Glory to God. Don't stop me from that. Don't let iniquity rob me of loving my people. Clap your hands and tell him thank you. Come on, we can do better than that. Y'all learn anything today? Y'all learn anything? You see it now? You seeing it any better? Hmm? See it any better? You see it, Star? So God says, stop dishonoring the body. Why is it that Peter could say to Sapphire and Ananias, why you lied to the Holy Ghost? They thought they were talking to Peter. Because they were seeing him after the flesh. The Bible says, see no man after the flesh. He said, there's no Jew, no Gentile, no, no Greek. All is Christ. Didn't he say that? All is Christ. Everybody that's born again is of Christ. We're the family on earth. Somebody say, I'm in the family of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you blessed this morning? Those of you that have been watching by way of television, BTBN, btbn.tv Roku watching us on your Android or your, your iPhone or your iPad those of you that have our app and watching this broadcast those of you that are watching us on iPoint over in Asia and Europe Grab this word. Hold it precious. And know that you've been called to carry it to the four corners of the earth. Contact us. I want to hear from you. 
I want to hear from those of you that are watching and listening. I want to hear from you. Email me. Info at btbn.tv Info at btbn.tv Or oh, send it directly to me. Mary Banks at MaryBanks.net. I want to hear from you. That's easy to remember. Mary Banks at MaryBanks.net. Send me an email. I want to hear how this word is affecting you. Now, saints, if God has spoken to you, you should be saturated. You should be allowing this word to just saturate and massage your spirit. Yeah. See, I don't, like form, I don't like just doing things by formality. I just, just for the sake of doing them. I, I, li I like to just be real. Just, 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 just real. Just real, okay? Let this word massage your spirit. Now, if there's somebody that's not born again, and you want to be born again, you can come run up here and fall on your face and say, God, save me. God, save me. I am in darkness. I want to come to the light. If you want to be saved, now you can just fall on your face and say, God, save me. I want to be saved. Hallelujah. If you're already saved, but this word found you today, and you know you're not, you haven't been where you should have been, and you've been dishonoring the body, you've been dishonoring this body that belongs to God, you haven't respected it and regarded it as Christ, just stand right where you are, and we're going to pray for you. If, if you know that you've disrespected this body, glory to God. Hallelujah. You haven't reverenced it as Jesus in the flesh. Just stand where you are. Hallelujah. God, I haven't reverenced my body as holy. But when I leave out of here, I want to be holy in spirit and in the body. I want to reverence it as holy. See, God can just, it don't take a whole lot of mess. Don't take a whole lot of theatrics for us to be delivered. It just takes sincerity. You don't have to make a show out of nothing. You just be sincere in your heart. Say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bishop, you want to come and pray. For these that are standing, this is your chance. If you feel that you've dishonored the body, just stand where you are. Just stand where you are, and we're going to pray that God will be merciful. He will forgive. Hallelujah.